Hey, my name is Felipe and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to make a face anonymizer. Face anonymization is a very important area of research in computer vision and it involves to take a person's face and to make it completely anonymous. So in this video, I am going to show you a very simple but a very effective computer vision algorithm to completely anonymize all the faces in an image or a video using 100% Python and OpenCV. This is an ideal project for beginners in computer vision. I am going to show you how to take an image, a video or a webcam containing a person, how to locate exactly where the face of that person is located and how to apply a very simple computer vision technique in order to completely anonymize that person's face. Yeah, exactly like this. <laughs> So, following the steps of this tutorial, you will be able to build a face anonymizer using Python and OpenCV. So let's get started. And this is exactly the process in which we are going to be working today. You can see that this is a 4 steps process, so in only 4 steps we are going to have our face anonymizer up and running. And you can also see how simple this process will be. The first step will be to read an image, to read the image we are going to anonymize, then we are going to detect all the faces in this image, then we are going to blur all these faces, we still don't know what blurring means, but I'm going to show you in a few minutes, and then we are going to save this image back to our disk, back to, back to our computer. So this is exactly the process in which we are going to be working today. And the first thing we are going to do is to set up this process for an individual image, to set this uh, system, this pipeline, this uh, face anonymizer for only one individual image. And then at the end of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take the same process to an entire video or how to apply the same process to a webcam. So let's start with it. And the first thing I'm going to show you is the requirements we are going to use in this project you can see that we are going to use only two libraries we're going to use OpenCV and MediaPipe we are going to use MediaPipe face detector in order to detect all the faces in our image so these are the two libraries we are going to use as always please remember to install these dependencies before starting with this tutorial and now let's get started so I'm going to start with the first step which is reading an image in order to do that I am going to need CV2 so I'm just going to import CV2 uh, and then, as always, I am going to define uh, an image which is called image EMG, IMG, and this will be CV2 in read, and then my image path, which I haven't defined, but I am going to define it now. Image path will be, I'm going to use an image which is in this location, data test image. Okay, so. This is exactly the image I am going to show you uh, how to uh, how, how to detect all the faces and how to anonymize all the faces in this image. Actually, we only have one face, but you know what I mean. I'm going to use this image as an example in this uh, stage, and this is the image I have just uh, loaded using OpenCV. Let's go one step at a time and let's see if everything works properly. I'm just going to execute this code as it is. Everything works properly. Okay, so we can continue. And we have completed the first step in our four steps process. So we are one step closer to reach our goal. That's a very good news for us. <laughs> now let's continue with the next step. And this is where we are going to detect all the faces in this image. So what I'm going to do is to imp uh, import the other library. I'm going to import MediaPipe as MP. And this is how we are going to do it. The first step will be to create the object which we are going to use. I'm going to call this object something like MP face detection. And this will be MP solutions face detection. OK. Uh, and then I'm, what I'm going to do is with uh, MP face detection dot face detection and I need to input two parameters one of them is the mean detection confidence and the other one is the model selection uh, I'm going to set the model selection in zero and I'm going to set the mean detection confidence in something like 0 0.5 and I'm going to I'm, I'm going to explain exactly what these parameters mean in a, in a couple of minutes. But for now, let me continue. I am going to open this object as face detection, and then I'm just going to 
to nothing for now. Okay, so what we have done here, I'm going to change the order because it's going to be more clear. I have uh, created this new object, which is the object we are going to use in order to detect all the faces in our images. And this uh, object requires two parameters. One of them is called model selection and the other one is mean detection confidence. Model selection refers to uh, when we are using the face detector for media pipe, there are two different models we can use. We can set this value in zero or one. And if we use zero means that we are going to detect faces in, uh, how to say it, in faces which are very close to the camera, in faces which are within two meters from the camera. This is the situation where this model performs the better. And this, and then if we set it in one is because we are going to detect faces which are farther than five meters away from the camera, right? So this is why I have set this value in zero. If I show you the image we are going to use in this stage of this process, you can see that this is an image which was taken very near the camera. So we definitely need to use this value for model selection. Um, and then for mean detection confidence, I think 50% is a good value. We could put it in a higher value. We could make like a, we could use like a higher confidence value, but I think 50% is going to be fine for now. Uh, so this is why I have selected these two values. And now we have an object, which is the object we are going to use in order to detect all the faces in our image. And this is how we are going to do it. Uh, I am going to convert my input image from BGR uh, to RGB because the face detector we are going to use it needs to detect faces on an RGB image so I am going to call CV2 convert color and then I'm going to input image and then CV2 color BGR to RGB okay and now that I have created this object what I am going to do is to call face detection process and I'm going to input my uh, my image, my RGB image. And I am going to call this object out. So out will be the output from processing this image. And now in order to go one step at a time, I'm going to show you exactly how out looks like. So I am going to print uh, out, but I'm going to print all detections which are under the detections attribute of the output of this processing, right? If I show you this uh, object, this attribute, this is how it looks like. You can see that now we have a lot of information and this definitely looks like a bounding box. This definitely looks like uh, the face we are detecting because you can see we have four different values. This is the X, Y and then the width and the height of the bounding box of our face or that's what it seems. That's what it seems this is. And also we have additional information which are something like uh, key points. We are not really going to use these key points. With this is our, the, these are our face landmarks and we are not going to use it in this uh, tutorial but this is only in order to show you what's all the data we have in this output in these detections also please notice that we also have the score the confidence value for this uh, detection and you can see that this is a very 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 high confidence value it's like 96 percent so this is a very very high confidence so this is basically how this object uh, looks like. And what I'm going to do now is to extract this information from this object. And the best way to do it will be to do something like for uh, detection in out dot detections. And then if I show you back the uh, how this object looks like, we will have to uh, get this member, which is location data. So this will be something like detection dot location data. I'm going to call this location data. And then we have to call relative bounding box. So this will be um, bounding box. And this is location data, relative bounding box. Okay. And then the X mean, Y mean, width and height are these uh, members from the relative bounding box. So I'm going to do it like this. X1, Y1, width and height will be bounding box dot X mean, bounding box dot Y mean, bounding box dot width 
and then bondingbox.hate. Let's see if this works, only to see, uh, only to make sure we don't have any error. We don't have any error, so everything's okay. So, okay, so we have ungrabbed the bounding box from the face we have detected in this object. So everything goes super, super well. Now, before we continue and before we go to the next step in where we are going to take this face and we are going to anonymize it, we are going to blur it, before, before we continue, let me show you what happens if the image we have uh, input doesn't contain any face, because that's another situation that could perfectly happen. If we run this process in an image that doesn't contain any face, we will face with an error and let me show you exactly why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this object to see how it looks like. Not only in this case where we are detecting a face, where we are taking an image with a face, but let's see what happens when we input an image with absolutely no face. And in this experiment, I'm going to show you how, what happens when I input this image of a giraffe, right? This is an image I'm going to show you uh, what happens when I input this image into this script. So the, I'm going to change the image. Now it's going to be test no face. Obviously that the image I have just shown you and the one I'm going to show you now uh, in this test, it does contain a face but it's not a human face, it's a giraffe face. So it will be a very good example in order to see what happens when we input an image with absolutely no face. So uh, now I'm going to run the same process again. And you can see that now we have a, a, we have found an error and we have found an error here where we started our iteration. And you can see that the print we have made of our object of our detections is none. So in the case of uh, taking an image containing a giraffe, <laughs> no, uh, I'm just kidding. So in the case of taking an image containing absolutely no faces, containing other type of objects, then this is what's going to happen. We are going to get a none as our detections. So we, before starting this iteration, we need to make sure that uh, out detections is not none, right? So I'm going to say something like, um, if out detections, this will be enough, but let's do more clear and let's say if out detection is not none. So let's do this, right? And now everything is going to be okay. If we have found at least one phase, if we have found at least one detection, then iterate in all the detections you have found in order to uh, do everything we are going to do, right? We are going to anonymize absolutely all the faces we have found in this image, but in order to do that, we need to make sure we have found at least one face. Otherwise, this is going to find a huge error. We will have a huge error as the one we just had. Okay, now let's continue and let's uh, continue with our bounding box. In order to show you more clear that this is actually the face we have found in this image, I am going to do something else. I am going to extract these values, which are the height and the width of our image, and I'm going to say this is image.shape. And now I am going to rename x1 as uh, the integer of x1 times with this w, this this uh, capital w, the, the one of our, the one representing our image width. And then I'm going to do exactly the same for all the other values, because remember the, uh, the bounding box we have ungrabbed, it's a relative bounding box. The values are relative values. So we definitely need to convert it into uh, an integer and we definitely need to convert it into these values in order to use it later on on this script. <laughs> so uh, this is how we are going to do it. This will be this will be a y1 w h and now I need to adjust this by an h and this by an h2. Now in order to, sh to show you more uh, properly how this works I am going to draw a rectangle around this face so I'm going to input my image and then these two values will be x1 uh, y1 and then x1 plus 
W and Y1 plus height. I'm going to draw a green bounding box, a, a green rectangle, and then the thickness will be something like, I don't know, 10. And this will be our image, and that's pretty much all. And now what I'm going to do is to, um, to visualize it, and in order to do that, I'm going to call cb2 show image, and this will be my image okay and then i'm just going to hold it with weight key and a zero okay okay so let's see what happens let's see if we have detected the face we should be detecting and okay so we, we are still plotting the giraffe <laughs> uh, because i haven't uh, edited this image path, so I'm going to do it now, this will be testimage.png and that's pretty much all, let's see now, and you can see that we are detecting exactly the uh, person's face, we are detecting exactly the face of this guy okay, so let's continue okay, so we have detected this person's face, and now the next step is to anonymize this step now we are here and we are going to blur all the faces um, and in order to do that, I'm not, I don't need to draw the rectangle anymore. And um, what I'm going to do, this actually should be here, right? Because this is where we are going to do it. I am going to call an OpenCV function which we have never used it so far in this channel, which is called Blur. And Blur is going to receive two parameters. One of them is the image we are going to blur, and then it's the uh, kernel size. This measures somehow the strength of the blur we are going to do on our image, if it's going to be a very intense blur or if it's going to be a more soft blur, right? So I am going to input a uh, very random value, I'm going to input this in 10 times 10 and we can adjust it uh, later on so this will be your image and let's see and the, the, the first thing I'm going to do is to blur the entire image so we can uh, get more familiar with the blurring so we can see how it works and then we are going to blur only the face but for now let's do it in the entire image and let's see what happens and I realize now, I don't know what happened outside, but it's like super, super uh, cloudy or something. So the lighting is uh, like uh, super low, but you can, you can see me. As long as you can see me, everything is going to be okay. So this is the image we are blurring. You can see that now it looks completely different as the, as how it looked uh, before we applied the blur. And you can see everything looks like super, super blurred, right? In order to show you more clear, more, more, more clear, I'm going to apply like a more aggressive blur and I'm going to do something like this. And now let's see what happens. You can see that now we have like a more, more intense blur. Okay, this is only to show you and to, so we, we, we can become like more familiar on how this blurring works. And now we want to apply exactly the same blur, but only on the face. And this is how we are going to do it. We are going to apply this in image y1 and then y1 plus height and then uh, yeah and then x1 and x1 plus width and the three channels okay and this is our face yeah these are the coordinates of our face and let's we should do something like this so this is what we are doing we are taking the face in our image we are blurring the face and then we are replacing the previous face void with the new face with the blurred face which is exactly what we want to do and now i am going to press play and let's see what happens and you can see that we are blurring the face and we are not blurring everything else but it's not very very clear because I have reduced the uh, kernel size to 10 by 10 I am going to do it in 30 times 30 and let's see what happens and you can see that now it's much more clear that we are blurring this guy's face now 
I will say everything is pretty much ready for this step of this process because you can see that this guy's face is completely anonymized. We have successfully anonymized this person's face. Someone who uh, knows this person can't know who he is because now he is completely blurred. Now he is completely anonymized. So we are definitely one step closer to reach our goal. And now let's continue. Uh, the next step we should do is to save this image because this is the last step in our process. So uh, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going back here. Um, no, I'm going to do it here because yeah, I'm going to do it here. And what I'm going to do, I don't really need to visualize it anymore. So I'm going to delete these two lines. And the only thing I'm going to do is CB2 in right and I'm going to input the image, I'm going to save the, the image is, will be the second parameter and then I'm going to input the location I'm going to save this image into so this will be ospat join and this will be an output directory which I haven't defined there yet output directory and then uh, the name of this output will be anything I'm just going to call it output.png anything will be okay we could name this uh, image uh, with exactly the same name as the image we have read from our file we could name it exactly the same we could extract the name and apply exactly the same name but it doesn't matter this just a very dummy example so let's just do it like this so uh, i need to define these two <laughs> uh, values otherwise it's not going to work so i need to import os and then i'm going to define this output directory which I'm going to do it here before we start with the entire process. This will be the current uh, directory and it will be something like output. And then I'm going to say something like if uh, ospat exists output directory, if not, if the directory doesn't exist, I'm going to create it. So os make dears output dear. Okay. And if it does exist, I'm not going to do anything with this directory. Okay, so we can continue. I see that the light is back. I see that the cloud or whatever has gone. So yeah, you can see me again. Perfect. <laughs> uh, now let's continue. So we are grading the image into this uh, directory, into this location, and this should be it. And this is going to be all. If this works, means that we have successfully applied absolutely all the steps in this process, all four steps in this process, and we have anonymized absolutely all the faces in our input image. This means that everything is perfect and everything is ready and everything is completed. Let's see what happens when I execute this script. So I'm going to press play. Let's see if we don't have any error. We don't have any error. And now if I go to output, to my output directory, you can see that now I have this output, which is exactly the image I have input, but with the face, which is completely blurred. So uh, yeah, so everything works properly. And now we have completed this process for the case of an individual image. But at the beginning of this tutorial, when we started this tutorial, I told you that after applying this process to an individual image, we were going to make it work on an entire video and on a webcam. So this is how we are going to do it. This is just going to take us a few more minutes, but you can see that we have solved this problem. We have definitely solved this problem. So we should be super, super happy with, us, with ourselves because we have successfully solved this problem. What we have to do next, it's only a detail and it's going to take a few more minutes, but it's only like, a, it's meaningless next to what we have just achieved, which is uh, completely succeeding in anonymizing all the faces in an image. Now we only have to iterate in all the frames in a video and that should be enough. So let's see how we can do that. Uh, what I'm going to do, which is going to make things much, much simpler in order to continue with this process and applying all the all this pipeline, all this uh, face anonymization to an entire video, is to grab some parts of this process into a function. I'm going to define a function which is def um, process image and this will 
receive an image and also a face detection object. Okay, and this will be uh, all of this, right? We are going to read the image and then everything that's uh, after reading the image will be inside our function. Now this will be image RGB. This is face detection. So everything is pretty, pretty, pretty well. Um, actually, something I can do instead of doing this color conversion here, I'm going to do it inside of this image processing. And now I can just input. Oh, and now I can just input my image. Okay. Okay, now everything is okay, yeah. We are going to input the image and this face detection object and then we are going to do all the uh, image processing inside this function. I'm going to return the image, return image, and that should be all. So what I'm going to do now is to call this function here. This will be process image and image and face detection and that's pretty much all okay so we have grabbed the entire functionality everything we have made in order to process this image in order to detect all the faces in order to uh, blur absolutely all the faces in this image into an individual function and what i'm going to do now is to make a few very very small edits in order to uh, fit this into different use cases, into different purposes, because we can, we want to make this script functional on an individual image, but also on a video and on a webcam. So this is how we are going to do it. I am going to import uh, another uh, library, which is ArcParse, and I'm going to define a few additional objects. I'm going to say something like ArcParse. Um, argument parser i'm going to create this object and this will be args and then i'm going to say something like args add argument and i'm going to define an argument which will be mode right we will have an argument we will have a value which the user can set in different modes so if the user wants to um, wants to input an image the, the user will specify a value of image in mode. And if he wants to detect all the faces and anonymize all the faces in a video, the user will select video. And if he wants to do every, uh, the same with a webcam, the user will type webcam. So mode will contain the uh, mode selection of the user, depending where the user wants to run this model, wants to run this script. And then I'm going to add another argument, which will be the file path, right? Because if we are going to be working with an image or with a video, we are going to uh, read a file from our disk. So we definitely need another argument in order to do that. And this will be, I'm going to test how it performs with an individual image, and then I'm going to do it with a video or with a webcam. And I need to copy this file path, this file location, into this uh, new argument, because now we are going to specify or uh, image location or image path in one of these arguments. I'm going to just delete this value. And another change I'm going to do is that I am going to um, change the location we are, where we are reading our image. And I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to put it here. And I will ask what it, what's the value of the one of these are one of these arguments what's the value of mode and if args dot mode in image then i am going to read the image and i am going to do everything else and now i have to redefine image path which will be args dot um file path and obviously I almost forget, but I also need to say something like this, args, uh, parks, args. Okay. Uh, okay. Now everything should be okay. 
Uh, and now I, I, the only thing I need to do is to adjust this process and I'm going to put the image here and then I'm going to save it here, right? Because if we are reading an image, then we have to do exactly the same process we have uh, we were doing before, but everything should be within this if. Okay, now let's see if this works properly. Now I am going to run exactly the same process. I am going to run again exactly the same image and let's see if we can produce exactly the same output. So I'm just going to uh, delete the image we saved a couple of minutes ago. I'm going to press play and let's see if we can generate exactly the same image again. Okay, so everything works properly. Everything continued working properly for the case of an individual image. And now let's see how we can fit this process into uh, in order to make it work with a video. Now, uh, elif args.mode in video uh, we are going to do exactly the same, but instead of uh, reading an image, we should be reading a video. So we will do, we will say something like CV2 video capture, and this will be args file path because now file path will be a video, will be the location of a video. And once we do that, I am going to read the first frame of this video and this will be something like cap.read. I'm going to release the memory before I forget. And then the only thing we need to do is to uh, define a while true because we want to iterate in absolutely all the frames. We want to read a new frame in, in, in every iteration and this will be something like this cap.read and before we read the new frame what I'm going to do is to apply the process function we have defined so I'm going to do something like this I'm just going to copy exactly the same uh, sentence and I'm going to replace image for frame right and that's pretty much all we need to do in order to make this process uh, in order to make it work on a video Okay, so we are applying the process to an entire video and what we need to do now is to uh, save the video because we want to repeat exactly the same process. And in order to save the video, I am going to create a new object which is output, output video and output video will be CV2 video writer if I'm not mistaken. Uh, maybe I'm mistaken, so I'm going to adjust it in a couple of minutes if it doesn't work. <laughs> and I need to specify a few arguments. The first one is the location where I'm going to save this uh, video. And this will be path join uh, output dir and then output mp4, right? Um, the same applies for the what I mentioned about the image. We could apply exactly the same name as the video we are reading as uh, input, but let's just make it simpler and it's just uh, I'm just going to define it as output MP4. So then I need to specify another value, which is the codec we will be using, which is this one. And then I need to specify the uh, frame rate, how many frames per second, and I'm going to specify this in 25. And then I am going to uh, specify the width and the height of this video, which will be the width and the height of the image we are reading in this video. So I'm going to create the object here so I can access frame. And this is something like frame shape one and frame shape zero okay and, and if we want to make it even better the the frames per second which i have hard coded in 25 if we want to make it super 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 nicely we should be accessing what's the frames per second in the video we are reading and we should be specifying exactly the same. But let's make it simpler and I'm just going to hard code it in 25. But if we will want to make it super, super, super properly, then we will have to specify exactly the same frame rate as here. And that's pretty much all. Okay, I'm just going to run this process to make sure everything works properly. And everything does run properly. Okay, so I'm going to continue. Uh, everything runs properly, but we are still executing an individual image. So I'm going to say something like video and the video I'm going to use as an example will be uh, this video, 
which is a person which is talking in front of a camera and we can definitely see her face in the entire video so this is going to be a very good video to use as an example in this script so what i'm going to do now is video and the data will be test video what was the name test video dot mp4 okay and now let's see if it runs properly okay it doesn't run properly because uh, let's see where we have an error okay okay right what we need to do is to take this value and put it here okay let's do it before everything else so it's a little cleaner but yeah it's the same idea let's see now everything seems to be working properly let's just wait no but it, it doesn't work properly <laughs> uh, wait through process image frame face detection we are reading this frame that's okay and then image.shape but frame is none um let's see why frame oh this is not while true this is while red <laughs> uh, i don't know why it was while true it seems i it seems i yeah i know i i wanted an infinite loop for some reason but no we want to specify while red uh, okay, so everything run uh, smoothly, everything is executing just fine, so we can continue. So the only thing I'm going to do now is to say output video dot write, and then I'm going to specify the frame I'm going to write, right? But obviously I need to write this frame before reading the new frame, because otherwise I'm just going to read exactly, I'm just going to save the exactly the same frame I am reading from my video. But if I do it here, everything is going to be just fine. <laughs> and that's pretty much all. Now I'm writing these uh, frames and everything should be ready. So the only thing I have to do now is to release the memory, the memory from this new object. Uh, release and that should be all now I'm going to execute the code again and now we should be saving absolutely all the frames and creating a new video which is blurring uh, the face of the person I show you in this input video and let's see what happens if I go to output and I open this file this is exactly how this file should look like it's the person, exactly the same person I was showing you before, but now it's with her face completely blurred and you can see how well this performs. It, you can see that we are not missing a, a, absolutely any frame. We are capturing the person's face in absolutely all the frames in this video and we are blurring exactly the location of the face. So it works super 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 properly and super 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 smoothly and now let's continue because remember we want to make this work on the webcam we want the user to be able to uh, anonymize all the frames in the webcam so i am going to add a new mode which is if arcs.mode in webcam what will happen now is that we are going to run a process which is very similar to this one but now i'm going to open the webcam which will be and uh, remember we you need to specify a number in most cases it will be in the number zero because this in case you only have one webcam connected to your computer you are going to use number zero but in my case i'm going to use number two because i'm going to access another webcam i have more than one more than one webcam uh, attached to my computer and then i'm going to release memory at the end uh, although i'm not completely sure if it is absolutely needed in the case of the webcam but i'm going to do it anyway it's always a good practice when you are creating memory when you are uh, creating an object and this object occupies memory to release the memory this object is uh, taking this object is occupying so this is what i'm going to do i'm going to release the memory and then the only thing i need to do is a process which is very similar to this one in this case i'm not going to save the frames i'm just going to visualize it 
and I'm going to process it and I'm going to read it but Uh, something like this frame frame and then I'm not going to write it but then what I'm going to do is to call cv 2 because I am going to visualize this frame so we can see exactly how it looks like I'm going to read frames from my webcam and I'm going to visualize it uh, and that's all and then I'm going to wait wait key I'm going to wait for 25 milliseconds so it looks continuous so it looks real time and um, yeah and that's pretty much all let's see if i have forgotten something so webcam reading frames processing frames visualizing frames and then reading a new frame and then releasing memory yeah everything looks proper and now what i'm going to do is to set this new mode which is webcam and now I will, this, it doesn't matter because we don't, we're not going to use it, but I'm just going to set it in none. And let's see what happens. I have already, I have this webcam right here. Something is not working properly. Let's see what is it. Let's see if I made this proper. Cap, video capture, red frames, cap red, white red. Process image, im show, frame, 25 milliseconds, everything seems it's okay. Uh, can't open camera by index. Okay, maybe I made a mistake. Let's, ah, because I haven't connected my webcam. That's the reason why. Okay, so I have connected my webcam. That took way longer than expected, but it doesn't matter. Now we are ready to continue. So I'm going to press play and let's see how it performs or let's see if it works with my webcam. And you can see that it works perfectly. Now we are detecting exactly uh, my webcam. We are detecting my face and we are blurring exactly the location of my face. So the face anonymizer is working super, super perfectly on my webcam. You can see that we are getting a real time detection. Everything is working real time and everything is working super, super, super properly. So this is going to be all for this tutorial. This is how you can build a face anonymizer using Python and OpenCV. And this is going to be all for today. If you enjoyed this video, I invite you to click the like button and I also invite you to subscribe to my channel. My name is Felipe, I'm a computer vision developer and in this channel I make tutorials, coding tutorials, which are exactly like this one and I also share my resources as a computer vision developer. So if these are the type of videos you are into, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. This is going to be all for today and see you on my next video. <laughs>